Good evening and welcome to the Friends of Anchor Golf Day 2023 from the magnificent Peter Cooter Golf Club. And haven't the team done a fantastic job organising another great day? They've even sorted the weather. The sun is out, nothing can go wrong. Although I'm hearing straight away something has gone wrong. Roger Jameson has been abandoned by the rest of his group and he's only on the first. Well, it's going to take him top speed running to try and catch up with the others. Look at those moves. Uh, well, that's all the running you're getting from Roger, although he better get a skip on because he's absolutely nowhere near the rest of his team after half a hole. Well, of course, it's a, it's a great day to take memories and yeah, Piper Sandler B getting a picture taken. It's kind of hard to see them past our cans of lager or IPA. I'm not quite sure what they're getting there, but it certainly brought a smile to their face at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, a drive for show and it is put for Doe and Ian McDonald trying to build up his confidence with his little tap-ins. It's all about seeing the ball drop. And maybe put from even closer with your next couple of things. Ian, yeah, that's just about the length. Uh, back with Piper Sandler B and Tom Williams down at his bag after the photograph. And he's taking advantage. He certainly, well, it's a hot day out there, that's for sure. Get in, Tom. Well, that should see him round the first four or five holes before reaching the halfway house. Uh, no wonder he's smiling. Well, I think you're loose enough after those beers. Uh, but it is very picturesque, and some of the golfers are out in their Sunday best. Look at this for an outfit from Andy Forrest. We just wanted to show you the outfit and a swing. We've got no idea whether this will be a good shot or a bad shot. Oh. Well, that was quite a loud shout of four. It's probably not the best shot. Uh, it's probably not the best shot either. Anyway, we should probably move away now. Tom Williams. Not all those cans of beer in his bag are still intact, I have to tell you, and I think they're taking their toll. And he's struggling a bit to line up here on the first, yes. Uh, that's what that's his view, that's what Tom's seeing at the moment, and he's struggling to, to sort himself. I'm not, I think those beers might well put him off his natural game. We'll have to wait and see. Not completely unaffected. Yes, just duffing it 60 yards to the left. Absolutely unaffected by all that alcohol. Remarkable. Now, out to four. Jamie Dunn. Uh, well, they're using a short drive. It can't be Jamie's because he's one of the most powerful hitters in the field. Look at that. Raw power. He really needs to learn to tame it. Uh, it's not ideal when you're only 10 yards short of the green. You're hitting the ball quite so hard. But down onto the first towards the green. And Gordon McLaren. Here, nicely on the fairway, and he's flopped that up, and I tell you what, that looks pretty good, right over the flag. Well, that's a tremendous shot, but of course a Texas scramble today. And in his team, he is playing alongside John Black. Uh, there's John with the practice wing, and I tell you what, if you think that Gordon McLaren's shot was good, and John Black can't do any better... Well, I can tell you, you'd be absolutely right as <laughs> that shanks off towards the trees and possibly out of bounds, and that's impressive. Back up to the tee, and Ian McDonald, well, we saw him practising his putting, and he wasn't having too much success there. Uh, but like we say, it's drive for show and putt for dough. So he might not be making too much money with those putts, but can he give us a spectacular drive? Uh, no, I think he should have been practising his driving as well. Going about as far as his putts. Uh, but just in the same enough. Not quite far enough, I would have thought, to be used. Uh, out to 14, Andy Hutchin. And speaking about not quite hitting the ball hard enough. Oh, bang on line. Oh, dearie me, just short. Oh, and Andy will be cursing that. That was bang on line. Yes, and just coming up a little bit short. Now, coming up short, well, coming up short with a massive drive here on the first, Nick Latham. Now, you cannot ever accuse Nick Latham of coming up short, especially with that wedge in his hand, bladed right off the bottom. The cameraman's in danger. Well, he's just managed to split the camera crew there, found a gap. 
and not sure they'll be picking that ball for their next shot. That's a long way back. There was some quality golf out there occasionally. Beat the Pro was on offer at the 8th. Uh, this is Luke Knight. Now, the Pro is front left of the green. Luke's not having any of that. He's going straight for the flag. Uh, oh, a little bit of backspin. Great shot there. Yes, they beat the Pro that team. They only managed a four. Well, out to the halfway house and Colin Laird is looking for some food from the chef. Now, he's on the Atkins diet. He's not allowed a bun, so he's going to be very well behaved. Very well behaved. No bun there. And I say he's looking for some food off the chef. I think he's looking for all the food off the chef. Still no carbohydrates, though. Yes. Oh, what a good boy Gordon Laird is. Sticking to the no carbs by eating every single piece of meat on that barbecue. Now, 14, Richard Taylor from just off the green. Now, his own personal golf game, he's used to missing the green. And it shows. Look at all the practice he's had. Yeah, straight in the middle of the hole. Magnificent stuff from Richard Taylor. I would have celebrated a little bit more, but he obviously does it all the time. Well played. Now, over to the eighth. And the Piper Sandler B team. Uh, Mason Hendry, now he's looking to hold this putt for a two. And uh, it is in. What a magnificent putt. No wonder they're celebrating. It's not the fact that they've got a birdie. It means that they can spend less time on the green because they're at the eighth. And less time on the green means a quicker run to the halfway house to top up the beers. <laughs> well played, boys. Now back to three. Lawrence McLeod. And the ball sitting up nicely in the middle of the fairway. I tell you what, that's a smooth swing. Uh, we have had some good golf today, but what about this? Are we going to hole out from 150 yards, rolling up, rolling up? Oh, just over the top of the hole. Magnificent stuff there from Lawrence McLeod. Well, he must be, he must have very encouraging teammates. A bit like Matthew Bleakley. Now, it's not so much what happens here as you can see, but you have to tune in and listen to the support that Matthew enjoys from his teammates when he does something like this. <laughs> Fantastic sympathy there from the rest of the Craig International team. Uh, well, if it's sympathy you want, how about a little sympathy for uh, Nicole Stephen? He's struggling a bit today. Let's see if he's got his game together here on three. Come on, Nickel. Uh, well, it's an improvement. It's an improvement, I can tell you that. But, uh, well, speaking of sympathy, let's have a closer look at Sally Barry and her sympathetic take on that shot. If she can barely hold herself together with laughter. Uh, well, Nickel said, well, if you're laughing at me, why don't you step up and do something better for the team? And, uh, well, Sally duly delivered. Another fantastic shot here at three. And, uh, well, yes, I guess you're entitled to laugh if you can do that yourself. Now, up to 18, looking for a strong finish. Chris Kelman. Uh, well, that's a very languid, smooth swing. Will it pay dividends? It will. Coming up just short of the flag, but a great approach shot. Another good shot. We were having to show some real quality golf this year. It's only fair if the golfers can produce. Now, Chris Ness, he doesn't have too much room to work with on the green. Bit of a fluffy lie. He'll be doing well to get some check on this. He'll be doing well to stop the ball short of the flag. Well, he do very well. He stopped the ball short of the green. Terrific control. Too much control. And, well, he's playing with Liam Pirrie. Now, Liam watched Chris's shot. He won't want to make the same mistake, that's for sure. So he'll be delighted with driving that six iron through the green past the flag. Uh, well, he might just hold the green, this green proving tricky to hold from 15 yards away. But he's just about managed it for the Modjuspec team. Now, 14, Grant Moorhouse. And Grant, a quality player. He'll be looking to hold. This is a birdie opportunity, you have to say, for the team. And Grant has just pushed it. Well, I don't know if that was a push or a misread. Just went off to the right. But of course, you can help Friends of Anchor out today. I hope you're getting your hands in your pockets for the auction. Because Grant put his hand in his pockets for a mulligan. 
and for the team, took a mulligan and hold the putt. That's how you use your mulligan. Fantastic stuff there. Well played, yes. Yes, we got it. You're making sure the camera's got it. Well, here's Steve Judge. Now, Steve... Uh, well, Steve doesn't bother with mulligans, I can tell you that. Um, he wasn't buying any mulligans, but when you've got a short game like Steve, you don't need to. Another fantastic putt drop in here. It really has been some great golf. And out to 80, well, Piper Sandler B are about 14 beers down each. I don't fancy John Hamilton's chances much here with this. Uh, this lot are a bit legless. Yeah, <laughs> the jibes are coming. Well, he just can't concentrate. There's actually nobody there. The rest of his team went in and finished five minutes ago. He's hearing things. He's seeing things. He's been left a hole out on his own. And after all those beers... Well, I tell you what, it works. Well in, John. I mean, he took three goes, you can see from the other balls. Nobody there, but lovely stuff there from John. You can go in and, well, have a beer. Um, good stuff for the team. So now back to the first green, and we've got the Lovers Logistics and uh, a great approach shot from this lot. Uh, Mark Selby, first up, and well, that's a bit of a push. Perhaps he was expecting a little break right to left. But the Texas scramble format, look at the rest of the team watching on as Nick Latham has a go. Don't know why they're bothering watching Nick. Um, well, perhaps for some tips on what not to do. Next up, Scott Rennie. Uh, it's not a long putt, it has to be said, but with each miss, the pressure builds. And that looks good, that looks good. Oh, just caught the edge of the hole. And Scott Rennie, well, that's interesting for two things. One, you're here to enjoy yourself, Scott. It's all a bit of fun. It's just fun. Just, you know, well, not only are we not having fun, but, uh, well, it's throwing Scott because, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but the pressure is now on Callum Muir. The heart rate speeding up. That hole seems to be shrinking. The pressure is building. The hole is definitely shrinking. Three missed putts. Callum Muir. Four missed putts. And he can't believe it. The rest of the team can't believe it. And, well, now, see, now this is the problem that I was telling you about. Scott Rennie has never hit a putt that's been the closest, and he doesn't quite know what to do. He's knocking Callum's away, he's putting his ball down. Uh, well, he's just utterly confused. They never use his putt. The other's trying to tell him what to do, and he's just, he's flummoxed. But we're speeding things up, I'm, I'm hearing him at ear, it's actually because they want to use a mulligan. Nick Latham is completely confident, if he drops his mulligan here on the first green, they'll get the birdie. Oh no. <laughs> well, it's not such a great, act. well, the mood is pretty low in the sunshine for the first green. That has to be said, as the players head off. No, a second mulligan is getting played. They are determined to get this birdie on the first Callum Muir. <laughs> oh dear. Well, we've had six putts. We've had two mulligans used. It's just time to move on. No, it's not time to move on. Mark Selby, he's using one of his mulligans and... <laughs> seven putts from about four feet. No birdies. And I think we just have to move on before Scott just has a meltdown. And move out onto the eighth, and it's a tubal scope team. And well, they've missed the green with their tee shot. So Ian McDonald, he's just stepping up. And well, five shots so far on this par three, and tubal scope are not on the green. <laughs> it's not going well. Well, Kevin Yule, can he improve on that? Come on, Kevin. And it's on. Yes, it's on the green. It's on the it's certainly on the green, but still miles away from the flag. Six shots so far on this par three, and that's the best we can do. Next up is Mark Wood. And Mark, well, despite thinning it, that ball not even making the green. <laughs> and things are just well, it's all going wrong for the tubal scope team. That's still their best effort after two shots. So it's time. Greg Morrison, let's sort this out. Make sure you get a nice lie. If you're going to flop up and improve on that, in fact, make sure it's an even better lie. Yeah, he's not happy with that first lie that he gave himself, so he's just making sure he's got a better lie. Nicely done, Greg. Well, you might all be giggling at 
teeing the ball up like that, but nobody says you can. And when your team really needs you, tee the ball up and Greg Morrison, give us your best. Straight into the bunker. Oh dear, oh dear. And with that, I think it's time to leave you from the Friends of Anchor Golf Day 2023.